mean, we did talk a lot about openings in these games. They, with the black pieces, they basically had some bad openings. Yeah, we saw purely king pawn openings yesterday. White opening with the king's pawn, black replying with his king's pawn. And we saw Italian games, we saw Spanish openings, and both times white was doing quite well, white was on top. Nakamura with black pieces, he tends to be quite inflexible. He doesn't vary much, he doesn't go to other openings. He's very predictable. That's why Magnus Carlsen will be feeling confident with white. Magnus as black is maybe less predictable. He can serve with a different hand. He can go for a different opening. And I think that will be Magnus's strategy later on with the black pieces. But here, white change, a winning, um, a winning motif. Why go away from something that brought you so much success yesterday? Yesterday, Magnus opening with his king's pawn. We do see, will it be the Italian game again? Yes, for the third time in this quarterfinal, Magnus repeats the same opening. Nakamura playing copycat. Both sides have castled their kings away to safety. Magnus just bringing his rook into the center there with his last move. Yesterday, he was playing something slightly different. And now, okay, Black's knight has jumped into the white half, trying to attack very early on. White's rook having to step up to protect the pawn next to it. Nakamura, clearly he has done his homework. He's yeah. looking up now. That's his remembering face. He's trying to recall something here. This is quite rare, as far as I know. Usually, white doesn't allow the black knight to jump to that square so early on. And look at this, Nakamura moving the black king into the corner. He's getting ready to throw some pawns forward. He loves that move. He kept doing this uh, yesterday. Okay, well, Magnus chasing away the knight. And uh, just on that pawn, that king move, you know, he really do, does love that pawn break. I mean, we saw it nearly every single one of their encounters. Yep. The king not, slid across into the corner. Not just yesterday, in previous days as well. And uh, previous matches, Nick and Nakamura doing that. And Black actually has the opportunity right now, if he wants to sacrifice a knight, he's gone for it. Nakamura, he's playing the most aggressive uh, line against the Italian game. He's sacrificing the Black Knight, but Magnus Carlsen doesn't take the bait. He instead brings out the bishop to attack the Black Queen first. Next move, Magnus might get tempted to take that Black Knight, but not yet. Magnus... Nakamura, they both prepared this variation for sure. Who has done their research best? And okay, the Black Knight jumps back to safety. So no sacrifices yet, or well, no sacrifices that have been accepted, at least. And now Magnus has to decide how to continue.
kingdom and he just steps away with the Black Queen. Now Magnus continuing to harass that Queen and Nakamura, he sacrifices his Queen but we're going to see a Night Fork, the Black Knight attacking the King, attacking the Queen. Now Nakamura two pieces up, the Knight and a Bishop. Magnus, he's going to continue, he's playing on, the Rook attacks the Black Bishop but we see on Magnus's face, he's shaking his head, he knows he's, he's over now, he's lost. Black simply has a Knight and a Bishop, White's pawns are not going to suffice. Is it all over now? Yeah, uh, Magnus just going through the motions. The pawns are going to start dropping off the board. Two pieces, it's just too much. Even if White was able to trade the rooks, it would still be game over. And Knight and Bishop can't give checkmate together. Magnus just hoping for a last minute blunder now, pushing his pawns, but it's not going to happen. No. Really nice tactic there by Nakamura to trade the queens. That was uh, beautifully done, and also done with not so much time. I mean, that was very, very impressive. And uh, yeah, I agree with David. It is absolutely hopeless here. I mean, the bishop and the knight can easily pick off those two corner pawns that white has. And even with the trade of rooks, the position is still a very elementary checkmate. I mean, most people practice these uh, checkmating patterns. Yeah, the only hope for white remaining is that black will have to give up a knight or a bishop for that side, that pawn. But Nakamura, so tricky, retreats the knight, attacking white's pawn. If that pawn advances, then the black knight will jump to the square the pawn currently stands on, and that would be a fork. That would be a check to the white king, and it would also attack white's rook. And I don't think there's any way for Magnus to keep his pawn there, his A pawn. And without it, it's pretty much game over. He gives a check instead. He's going to drop his rook back one square to defend his pawn from the side. But the rook will just come over, and uh, you can see it's going to be rounded off. And uh, do you think uh, Magnus is going to make Hikaru play this uh, whole no, game? He loses. He blunders his rook to another knight fork. And there we go. Magnus Carlson resigns. Wow, it's over. Magnus Carlson with the white pieces in the first game in the second quarterfinal match.